Hey, what's up you guys? How's it going? Welcome to this third BFX Monday. No, I did not fail. So anyway, what we're going to do today is something quite interesting. As you take notice in your screen, you're looking at a flower. A very nice eccentric flower. Taken with an iPhone 4. Yes, iPhone 4, not iPhone 4S. So look at the quality. Let's look at the quality first before we get started. So look at this. It looks really nice. It's in focus. And what we're going to do today is we're going to change that flower's color to a different one. Why? Because I am not feeling pinkish today. I am feeling different-ish. So let's get started with today's VFX. We're going to be using Final Cut Pro 10. So if you do have a Macintosh, take advantage. And if you don't have Final Cut Pro 10, then give it a whirl. Just go download Final Cut Pro 10 from Apple's website. It's available for 30 days, believe it or not. So go ahead, give it a download and follow along with your own footage. Um, so let's get started. So we're, let's analyze this clip first. So as you can tell, it's just a nice little flower with an ant on it. Really nice. Again, taken with an iPhone. Can you believe that? Anyway, there's some shakiness right there. So we're going to end it right before we get to that shakiness. Press O to set it out, and your in is automatically the beginning of the clip. So now what we want to do is we want to create a new project, a new timeline, a new sequence. So let's do that. Let's go down to this plus sign here, click on it once, and let's uh, title this Flower Color Change, because we're changing the flower's color. Now let's go down to default event. I'm going to keep it at here, Monte. Now let's go down to video properties, and remember, if you are specifically looking for a specific frame size, go ahead and click custom. Change your, you know, setting to 720, change it to 1080, or if you're going to work with TV 1080 footage, go to go ahead and choose 1080i. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave it at set automatically based on the first video clip. Now I know by default it's 720, so let's just, I'm just going to choose that so I don't complicate things. Now here in the bottom, make sure to always use custom unless you're doing a feature film because by default, Final Cut will give you this option. Use default settings, surround sound 48 kilohertz and uh, ProRes 422. Now what's the difference between surround sound and stereo? Basically surround sound will give you six channels. So you have six channels to manipulate. And let's say you, um, you're working on a uh, just a regular video and you want to uh, you know just get all the audio out opposed to maybe have the lower left speaker have more boom than the right hand speaker. See if you're going to be precise with sound select surround. And if you're not, then go ahead and select stereo, because if you choose surround opposed to stereo, sometimes your audio might be off whenever you play in a stereo, you know, television set or whatever. So just something to keep in mind. So we're going to choose stereo, uh, audio sample rate 48 kilohertz. We don't even need audio in this uh, portion, so we're just going to keep it as that. Render format, Apple Progress. Click OK. Sweet. Now we have our timeline here in the bottom, and notice how my skimmer is following my mouse. If you want to get rid of that, just press S, and it's gone. But we're going to keep it, because I like it. So notice how... Let's go back. Notice how my flower here is selected. So what you want to do is you want to click on it, and press the letter E to append the edit. Now, notice it just went to my timeline. Super awesome. Great. Now let's zoom in on the timeline by pressing Command and plus plus. Sweet. Now that we're zoomed in, let's uh, just play it back. Let's press the home button. And if you're running on a MacBook Pro, make sure to press, uh, press the function bu button first, then the up arrow to go home. Just a tip. So let's play it back. Looks nice. Looks nice. Really nice. Okay, cool. I'm done with that. Now, this is why I really love Final Cut Pro 10. You could change the color of anything in the program, opposed to Final Cut Pro 7, which you would have to open up Final uh, Color, the program color, which was a separate application, and then change the color there. That was pretty cool, you know, if you have that workflow. But, you know, if you really didn't know, you know, how to color correct, how to color grade, then it would kind of be pointless, because you want to do everything in your NLE. So, here's what you want to do. You want to select your clip, 
Now you want to go to inspector and if you don't, you don't have it highlighted, I mean selected, just click on this little eye here. It brings the inspector up. Now look at your color tab. Sweet. We're just going to concentrate on this area. Go to your color option and then go to this little plus arrow here. Click on it once. You're going to make another, notice how I made another color correction. We're going to work on the second one, okay? So now that you have your second one selected, well, selected of course, click on this first icon and it's called the add color mask. Basically, this is going to select a specific color on your shot and, uh, you know, we're going to basically key out that color purely. So click on it once. Let's go to our image. Notice how the eyedropper tool is on the image. Then click on the area where there's more color of the color you want to change. So let's click. All right. Notice how I clicked. It's just saturating the highlights and then just drag out casually, 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 casually. Oh, not too much because then you'll get the other things. Sweet. Let go. <gasps> oh my gosh, what happened? Nothing. Well, look at here. Look over here. The color mask. Look, notice how this color is similar to this color. Basically, we masked, we're masking out this color. So now what you want to do is you want to go to this arrow here. Click on it once and you're presented with these three options a color saturation and exposure fancy tab okay now before we get started I want to give you guys another um, tip look at your inspector window notice there are two additional buttons in the bottom I didn't notice these until now basically it's inside mask and outside mask what's the difference well what we selected was the petals of this flower and basically it's going to create a mask around this flower so if we choose inside mask then whatever we do here will affect anything that is inside the mask in this case the flower petals but let's say we want to change the background to maybe a bluish color you would select outside mask and then change it to a blue color sweet now that we got that covered let's uh, work with the inside of the mask so now what I want to do is you know what I want to make this fancy, so let's change the color. You could change the color, so let's uh, see if uh, we could change it to a blue here. Remember, this is for shadows, so basically the dark areas. This is for midtones, which is like not too light, not too dark. And finally, we have the highlights, which is the lightest part of the flower. So in this case, I think we're going to mess around with the uh, highlights here. But if you don't want to mess around, if you want to be precise, go ahead and move these little three temps. But if you want to be more general, just move this big one. Okay. See how we're changing the color of the flower? Wow, that's nice. You know, you could be as precise as you want. I'm just teaching you how to do this. So, you know, it's up to you to make it real, as realistic as possible or as fake as you want. So, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create that effect where you just desaturate the whole flower. Remember, you could change the color here if you'd like, but I'm going to desaturate this flower. So if you go down, that's great. Now let's go to exposure and you can tweak down the exposure so it looks darker. Okay, sweet. Now, you might say, hey, Joe, you know what? You messed up. Why did I mess up? Because you have some areas missing on this flower. So how do you change that? Easy. All you have to do is go back, click on that arrow, and then click on the hue once more. Go back to the image, hold shift, and just make additional color masks. See? Just make, yes, there we go. Wow. Let's go home, press spacebar, and look at that. Oh my gosh. That looks so fancy. That looks really nice. So that's it. That's how you change colors from some color to another color or desaturate it completely using the tools native in Final Cut Pro 10. Just another reason why this NLE is better than the others. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this VFX Monday. And uh, I'm your host, Joe Delgado. 
And if you'd like, please leave a comment down below and like this video so I could see your support. Also, make sure to watch my uh, other video that I created just today. And it's basically an NLE battle series that I created. And that is a series that will have to do with, obviously, NLE. So basically, Final Cut Pro 10 versus Premiere Pro CS 5.5. The only reason I did that and I am doing that series is because a lot of people are confused. I know a lot of people who use Premiere Pro CS 5.5 just because Final Cut Pro 10 is out. And no, you shouldn't do that. Just because, you know, another program doesn't have the past tools of the, you know, past program doesn't mean it sucks. No, it's up to you to find out. So, I'll talk to you guys in the next video and thanks for watching VFX Mondays with your host Joe D. Make sure to stay subscribed and watch my past two videos. Bye-bye. What's going on here? You know? Just a, a little uh, tip here. If you are working on a heavy, heavy, heavy project and maybe you have like five subjects that you want to green screen at the same time because maybe they're, uh, you know, at a restaurant jumping around, what you want to make sure you want to do is if you don't have a uh, beast computer, if you don't have a high performing computer, go down here to this option and click one of these here, quarter, third, half, or full. In this case, I'm choosing quarter.